when I look at your heavens. Your heavens. The moon and the stars which you have set in place. Hello, Bezel Triple Three. I came across a news segment discussing a survey from the Pew Forum on Religious and Public Life. It tells us that America is a very religious country in the 21st century. However, the primary way of categorizing what Americans believe about religion is called pluralism. Take a look. Lord, we thank you for this. At St. Albans Episcopal Church in Washington, D.C., members of this weekly Bible study class agree their path to heaven is not the only path. And it is impossible for me to believe that Christ is the only window for salvation. Now, this woman's viewpoint is not hard to understand once you take a look at St. Albans Church website. Generally, a church is more than willing to tell you what it is they believe about God. Perhaps it's a statement of faith or a historical creed, but under the Who We Are section, we find this. Here you get a history of the church founders and how the building came about. But there is a tab to the right that says the Episcopal Church. Now if you click on that, you get a paragraph on just how liberal this church really is. But if you really want to know their theology, you can click at the bottom. And finally, you get this. Apparently, what St. Albans believes about God is not really very important to them. It's quite curious when I find a church, Episcopal or otherwise, that is so unwilling to allow a visitor to their website to know where it is they stand on the big issues, like how one is saved, or who Jesus is, or whether or not they believe in the triune God. 92% do believe in God or a universal spirit, but 70% of Americans believe many religions can lead to eternal life. Cordy Andrews' uncle is a Buddhist. But I believe that we will go to the same place. Even 57% of evangelicals believe other religions offer salvation, as do 79% of Catholics and 82% of Jewish Americans. Now let's talk about evangelicals. The word evangelical was a word that defined people who have committed themselves to the good news of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. But today the word is so nebulous as to have been all but gutted of its original meaning. Some who claim Christianity, however, don't even bother with the word anymore. Look at how a large Episcopal church in Pasadena describes itself. We read on their website, All Saints Church is a large, inclusive, urban, liberal-spirited church deeply committed to the issues of social peace and justice and to the spirit of creativity in all aspects of life. Jesus doesn't even get honorable mention. At least they're earnest about not wanting to be connected with the term evangelical, especially in its truest form. A clip from a recent Easter sermon should convince anyone that All Saints Church in Pasadena is not a Christian church at all, but rather it should be called All Saints Pluralistic in Pasadena. The process of personal, spiritual transformation, what we as Christians call dying and rising with Christ, life in the Spirit, is central to the world's religions. To relate this to the affirmation that Jesus is the way, the way that Jesus incarnated, that is a universal way, releasing us from Christian tribalism. It is not an exclusive way. Jesus is the embodiment, the incarnation of the path of transformation known in the religions that have stood the test of time and Easter vindicates that way of life and that Jesus. An Easter sermon, no less. Man, that's enough to make me want to lose my lunch. Anyways, here's the upshot of the survey which, if you talk to most people on the street, is really no big surprise. I think what it shows is that religion in America is much like a spiritual salad bar. Americans can pick and choose their what faith. What has not changed in a nutshell is that Americans are still a very religious people. Large majorities believe in God, pray regularly, and believe in the authority of Scripture. But what has changed is that Americans are becoming more and more willing 
to accept the religious beliefs of others. What is religious pluralism? Well, basically, it's the idea that there are many ways or paths to discover ultimate reality. In other words, God himself. But can one hold to true Christianity and at the same time claim to be pluralistic? Well, the answer is no, and I want to show you why. Think about the founders of the world's religions. Moses, Confucius, Buddha, Lao Tzu, Mohammed, and so on. Not one of them ever claimed to be sinless, or God's own son, or equal with God, or the only way to God. There is but one person who ever made these kinds of audacious claims, and that is Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said that to believe in him was to believe in God. Jesus said that to deny him was the same thing as denying God. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. All these statements, and many more like them, backed up by eyewitness accounts of real miracles performed by Jesus in front of those who didn't even believe him, and finally rising from the dead, all of which authenticate his identity, leaves us only two options. Either he was an absolutely crazy faker who found people deluded enough to die in order to perpetuate the lie about him being something that he was not, or Jesus was who he said he was. God in flesh. Now make no mistake, Christianity is exclusive, but it's also inclusive. It's exclusive in that Jesus, who is altogether unique among the religious leaders we spoke of before, demands total commitment to himself even above our love and adoration towards ourselves and our families. There can be no competing gods in true Christianity. So it is Jesus alone who is to receive our worship and obedience. And it follows that if there is only one true God who is revealed in the person of Jesus, then it makes sense that the only way of truly knowing God is the way that Jesus has prescribed, by trusting in Him alone. It's really much like anything else in this life. To have a successful outcome, one must perform an action correctly. For instance, if I want to go to Chicago, I certainly won't get on an airplane that's headed for Honolulu, Hawaii. In the same way, becoming right with God requires going about it in the correct way or we will never succeed. Trusting in Jesus alone for salvation from sin is an exclusive idea. But it's not narrow-minded or bigoted. It is rather true or false. In fact, it's the people who shout the loudest that we need to be tolerant of all religions who are the most intolerant of one particular truth claim. That is, that Jesus is the only way. However, Christianity is inclusive in that any kind of person, regardless of people group, geographic location, social status, gender, or age, can come to the fountain of God's mercy and drink deeply. Jesus said, Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And whosoever means anybody. It means you. And Christianity, rather than being intolerant, is at the end of the day quite tolerant. You see, as a Christian, I respect your right to reject the free offer of salvation in Jesus Christ, as much as I hope you will respect my obedience to the Christian faith by telling you that there is no other name on earth upon which a person can be saved.